and in this lesson we're going to use the generative AI tool a little bit more um, and in advanced mode where we can try and get some pictures where we can extend it to create different things and maybe have some fun with it so yeah let's get on um, so with this what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my lesson 9 file open up the start one and let's just have some fun so I've got Google images here I'm going to look for let's look for something like um, to, 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 the Mona Lisa right so this is the Mona Lisa painting I'm gonna grab a large size of it if I can there we go I'm just gonna save that into my lesson 9 images save that perfect and then I'm gonna drag Mona Lisa onto my canvas right perfect so far so now what I want to do is I'm gonna select the marquee tool and I'm gonna select the left side of Mona Lisa and the right side of Mona Lisa and I'm just gonna hit generative tool I'm not gonna write anything I'm just gonna click generate and I'm gonna let again Photoshop uh, try and figure out what to do in terms of the painting so this is a really fun thing that it, it, you can have some fun with where in terms of you know you can expand things um, to see a bigger picture from your famous paintings famous f uh, photos and, and things like that so this is something really just you know to, to mess about with to just in spark creativity I think um, so it's almost finished let's see what Photoshop does for us you can see here it's done a nice little painting it's it's also in the same style and again like I said we've got three different options there which we can put there we go I quite like this one so I'm gonna keep this one so I'm gonna double double click on that and that's that so let's say we want to take it a little step further right let's say we want to add something so let's say here I'm gonna select this space here and I want to click generative fill and I'm going to add say add a uh, I don't know well, this would probably be in Italy something so let's say add a uh, add a person in the same style painting click generate now hopefully Photoshop won't actually give me a character or a person in modern clothes um, if it does then we'll go back and just re rework the prompt and just say maybe something we're more in renaissance uh, and stuff like that but again see it, it's added something quite yeah it's adding something quite interesting I mean this one actually works a little bit better um, whereas it, again it's in the same style which is quite nice so we can keep that one I think and what else can we do so let's say let's give let's give the Mona Lisa character herself here uh, put some black sunglasses on I'm just gonna say add a pair of black sunglasses now <laughs> this will be funny to see but hopefully Mona Lisa will come out looking very cool after this and she'll have some really nice black sunglasses preferably some Ray-Bans but we'll see so Photoshop's again gonna try and do its thing. It's gonna recognize where the nose, the mouth, and the eyes are. And then obviously it's gonna know that it needs to place some sunglasses on there. And it's done a crazy job. <laughs> uh, let's go back. It's completely changed the face, removed Mona Lisa completely. So let's go back and just say, add sunglasses. Because ideally what we want to do is we want to try and keep as much of Mona Lisa in as possible, right? So we don't want to kind of remove her face and give her a slightly a different look. So let's see if it's done a better job this way. It's completely changed the face again. Completely <laughs> changed. You could have some fun with this, couldn't you? Um, there we go maybe the head's a little bit too big so uh, let's remove that let's say how do we go back um, I don't want any of this I'm gonna remove that so th this is the best thing is that you always have your stuff in non-destructive mode which is amazing so no matter what you add you can always remove it 
if you wanted to, right? So I've got my my woman in the back, I've got the, the faces here, and obviously I've got the, the extension there. Let's try it with another photo as well. Uh, this time we'll do uh, movie stills, right? Let's pick a very famous movie still. Let's pick, I don't know, what would be a very, very famous movie still? Just trying to think of one. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Let's go for, let's go for something from, I don't know, um, movie avatar still and the reason why I want to pick avatar is because avatar they have obviously you know non-humoid uh, humanoid kind of uh, features so I want to see if it does a really good job let's pick let's pick this one save this and save that I don't think Photoshop is going to open the WEP file. Yes, it does. Perfect. I'm going to extend the photo quite wide. There we go. And I'm going to select just the white area. Select that. And select that. There we go and click generative fill. Again, we're not going to write anything. Click generate. And it's almost like you've kind of, like I said, you've almost expanded the world, right? So you can see beyond the the director's intended vision. So if, if you know, if James Cameron only wanted you to see that bit of the thing, you can see a lot more, uh, more than you intend to. So let's see if it's done a great job though. So let's see here, what is it going to do? I wonder if it's going to give me the tree branch here as well. That would be interesting to see, or maybe whether it finishes her feet here as well. And it's almost done. Big moment of reveal. What have we got? Oh, wow. I mean, her feet, yes, <laughs> granted, but wow, depth of field as well. You can see it's figured out the depth of field and it's like, okay, I know what that looks like, so I'm gonna try and figure it out. So let's see if we can get some better feet one. See, that's a better feet one, much better. Again, the depth of field is still registered. Again, feet, feet looks a little bit weird there, but again, you always have to look at it from the perspective of that people are not gonna zoom into it, right? They're gonna zoom out from it. So you want to make sure that um, some some details might be a little bit array, so but it's fine. So what we can actually do is if I I quite like this right, I quite like the depth of field, and I like this front trunk. So what I'm going to do is if I double click on that, and if I duplicate this layer, but on the second layer, I'm going to pick the one with the legs is this. And then I can just go in here. Oh, inverse my selection. And I want to see if I can try and, there you go. Just paint that up. And there we have it. So now I have the best of both worlds, right? So now I've got the background, which I wanted, and I've got the front ground or the foreground uh, with the feet placed the way that I want it to be placed. Um, it's amazing. I'm interested to see, this is actually slightly on a different tangent, I'm interested to see how it would work on a TV show. So let's say Rick and Morty, uh, still. I'm curious to know if it would actually do, let's take this one for example. I'm just gonna open that here, double click on the layer. Oh. And hit the, oh, where is it, unlock the layer, click OK. I'm going to expand, expand that there, right about, let's, not too much, let's do that, perfect. Now I'm going to select the white bit, 
there, there. Select that there. I'm curious, and the reason why I'm curious is because obviously cartoons have different styles, right, than, uh, than real life, obviously. But um, just click generate. But the thing that I'm interested about is whether it keeps the, the style limit as well. I think it's just got myself, there you go. So again, whether it keeps the trees, whether it figures that out, whether it figures, so it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to know, because if that is the case, then it, it, the tool is a lot better than I expected. Um, so yeah, it, let's just give it a second to finish the, the rendering. And it's actually done a really good job. The only thing missing, I guess you can see here, it's, the, it's just the outline of the, of the actual background. But it's even got, you can see, it's even tried to do this, the, the reflections perfectly. Let's see what the other options are. Not bad. Again, not bad. Absolutely. I think it's done an amazing job. And it'll only get better, of course. Um, but yeah, so again, you can use the, you can see the generative AI. It's, it's, it's very, very, very intuitive. And it, it, by the looks of it, it works great on various different uh, styles as well. Um, so really, truly have fun with it and, and see what possibilities and, 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 you know, things you can come up with. Um, but yeah, so with that done, we're going to hop over to the next episode and where we can continue to talk more about the AI tools. See you there.